Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to beat every sieve with the Chinese. The first sieve we're going to discuss how to beat are the Dutch. Now with the Chinese versus the Dutch matchup, you want to apply as much age two pressure as possible. The Dutch in age three will get their Reuters, which will counter your heavy cavalry, which is China's arguably best asset in age three. So to prevent this from happening, you want to apply pressure and really stop the bank boom before their economy outscales yours. Now, I like to go with a mix of step riders, pikemen, and chukanus to destroy the Dutch player's base. The reason you want pikemen is because if the Dutch player goes hussars, you'll be able to deal with this, and you'll have high siege on top of that. The step riders are very effective because if the Dutch player goes skirmishers, you'll be able to counter their infantry and deal damage on the back line with your Chu canoes. Once you start going into their base, you don't want to stop applying pressure. You want to destroy the market because the Dutch player relies on the market due to their high coin income and needing to convert it into resources once they go idle. After you destroy the market, if there are towers in the area, clear those out, and then you subsequently destroy military infrastructure, and then you attack the Dutch player's town center for the win. The next civilization we're going to discuss is how to beat Italy. With Italy, similar to the Dutch, you want to apply age to pressure. In doing so, I like to go for the Russian consulate through tea export and applying pressure throughout the game. The Italians are very strong with their FF and or FI strategies as they're very attainable and can produce five falconets upon reaching age four with their advanced politician card, and then they can send two falconets from age three. Furthermore, if you have hand mortars, they could be nullified by a shipment of culverins, three culverins that is. So, what I like to do is take control of the middle of the map and push in. Now, a lot of times an Italian player will use their Lombards to effectively wall off the area. And they can also usually go Musketeers and then send in some Pavisiers. So what I like to do is I like to go with the Old Han strategy. Because most of the time Musketeers are very easy to macro for with seven villagers on food and then three on gold. Pavisiers are not as strong as the Bersaglieri in age four. And a lot of times the FF will be a naked FF from the Italian player. The other reason I like to go pikemen is because if the Italian player has a basilica up, they can send in papal lancers, which are very potent against the Chinese, especially in age two. So you want to contain them in their base. As you can see here, I'm sending in the Chu canoes, scouting around and then idling the player. And then I sent in step riders to just get some more siege down in case they send a Pavizier shipment. So it's similar to the three comp Dutch strategy. Now, when you are going in, an important thing to note is if you can kill the architect, that is a huge drop to the Italian player's economy. The architect builds buildings for free. And as you can see, I see botted the architect and I'm sending my step riders to kill it because it is 270 gold to produce another architect, which they really can't afford if they're doing an FF or an FI, because the timing is very, very important for them to execute. So you apply pressure, kill the architect, and then just idle the villagers in the town center, and then you can take map control, and then effectively outboom them, and then enter either a semi-FF or just continue applying H2 pressure depending on the opponent. The next save we're going to discuss is how to beat the Ottomans. Now, the Ottomans have uh, many strategies that they can enter 
as openings. So you want to be sure to be able to scout their deck and what cards they're going to select. That'll be very telling on what you need to do. So in this strategy, I've noticed that the Ottoman player does not seem to have many age two cards so i think that if they're not if they're that signals to me that they're going to go for a fast fortress since i saw he had 700 coin in capitalism so in the event that they fast fortress you want to uh rush them so that they don't get their falconets they don't get spahis and then they don't get their upgraded units if they are applying age two pressure that's fine just play defensively get your consulate out and then also use the block house and then you just do um typically you want to go step riders and true canoes old han isn't necessarily the best move but if you notice they have a stable it's always a good idea to either send the nine pikeman shipment because the delis are very strong with their one attack speed so in this case i am scouting their base i scouted out that they're not going to be going into H2 as much, and they're going to be potentially FFing. So in this situation, I am going to put on some pressure and then continue the match from there. Something to note, another H3 strategy for the Ottomans is that they can try and boom with three TCs. If this is the event, then you definitely want to be all in on their base because they're going to send shipments that will protect their base either with outposts or a fort, which is what we saw in this video. And if you destroy those TCs, they've wasted a shipment and a lot of tempo getting into the third age. So then from there, you pretty much just continue attacking, idling, and then you can win the game from there. The next civ we're going to discuss is Japan. Now, with the Japanese, there's a few things you want to focus on in the early game. If you can catch out the monks, do so. They are crucial for providing shrines to their civilization. Another thing too is good Japanese players will scout with their cherry orchard rickshaw. And if you can catch that out as well, that means that they have less food to gather. So if you can get that and the monks, you're off to a great age one. In this situation, I did catch out the cherry orchard rickshaw. I also like to go with tea export because the blockhouse, again, is very good at gathering map control on hunts and mines and then from there i like to go into straight h2 gameplay putting up a market sending 700 wood first and then seven step riders the step riders can run around the map and destroy any shrines that are on the map and then from there i like to use uh, the explorer training disciples and then also building a barracks in the middle of the map. So you want to put on H2 pressure, but you want to be careful because there's many options that the Japanese can go. The Japanese military in H2 is very expensive and their economy isn't rolling to its finest potential. So you can spend time gathering treasures, which is what I'm doing. And then I've noticed that the explorer is out there right now. So I'm going to go kill the explorer. As I mentioned, this is very important because if they... It, and also, if the Explorer uses the Smoke Bomb ability, which has been nerfed so that only one of them can use the ability, this gives you a good amount of pressure where they have to go back to their base. And if they can't use it, then that's good for you. <laughs> now, after this, I like to go Step Riders for the 7, but then I like to go Chukanus. Now, as you can see, I'm microing very carefully down there because... Uh, if they go Yumi Archers, your, your uh, pikemen will be under duress, and you want to make sure that they survive, because Naginatas are really good Lancer units, and they can decimate your Chu Canoes. So you want to make sure that you take out the Yumi Archers, and then if they have Ashis, your Chu Canoes can deal with those relatively evenly, and you can trade cost-effectively. Now, something to note is if you are going to be applying a lot of pressure in age two and making sure that the Japanese player doesn't get to the third age where they have a tremendous power spike, you might want to switch to the German consulate, as I've done in the other previous uh, age two guides, because the German consulate will make your units cheaper. Or you can go for the British because the Japanese military... They are strong. They are strong units. Everything is good. The Yumi Archers are S-tier. The Ashigaras are S-tier. The Nagis are very powerful. 
And so getting that extra 7% HP boost is critical. You might think 7% is not a lot, but what it ends up doing is it causes the enemy units to have to shoot your Chukanus, for example, one more time. And one more volley means that you're also getting off another volley and providing more DPS. And this is critical because you will win with numbers, not in quality, especially against Japan. So continue applying pressure. And then on the back of this, you want to go for an age up and you'll win the game. Now, the interesting matchup. If you're playing another Chinese player, there's a few things that you want to note. If they have a TP opening, they are going to FF 9 out of 10 times. If they don't do a TP opening, that means they're going for two villages. If they go for a two TP opening, you do the opposite. You go for two villages and you put on H2 pressure. If they don't do that and they go for two villages, you can do an FF yourself. However, I would recommend a semi-FF. You fake them out by going with a TP so they think that you're going to go to H3, but you're actually training units on the back line. Now, in this situation, this player has two trading posts. I wanted to make sure to destroy them. So I go out there with some units, and then I destroy the trading post, and I try at the same time to take out their units. Now, this player sent in the duck squad so they used their shipment on chu canoes and the flamethrower i disposed of the flamethrower and then i pro uh, proceeded to go in with the step riders china is horrible against cavalry this british or this chinese player knows that and went with the british consulate to provide some cover with musketeers so what i did is i just sent my chu canoes to the front line had my pikemen and step riders sit on the back and micro my way to this victory. What happens here is that I made sure that the Chukanus got rid of the musketeers and then the pikemen. This way, my step riders can do more damage, and then my pikemen are more free to either engage with the Chukanus in melee or they can just, just siege down buildings. When playing against a Chinese player that is fast fortressing, the first thing you want to destroy are the villages. Forget about the wonders. Forget about the Summer Palace. It's so tanky, and it's not really going to be providing them that much. And the village is number one priority. The second is the market. The Chinese player who is fast fortressing is either going to send a unit shipment if under pressure in H2, or they will be sending 700 wood. The wood is essential for providing themselves more villages because they're going to be pop capped very quickly and the village provides 20 population. If you destroy this, even if they get to the third age, their unit shipments won't be able to come in. Now this player has reached the third age. However, as you can see, I have so much more military and the RPGAs came in so that they have much less effective pop space. On the back of this, I'm training villagers consistently and making sure to just keep up in economy, as I will be ahead as I have the extra villager from the two villages from the Northern Refugees card. From here, as you can see, I'm focusing the village. This disables them from getting safe gathering points where their villagers cannot garrison, and they also have to spend more wood, 180 wood, on getting the next village. I train Keshex since this player is in the third age. I'm very fearful of the Chinese heavy cavalry as meteor hammers and iron flails can quickly dispose of any Chu canoes that you have on the front line. And the step riders are not that good in trading with other cavalry units. From here on out, I'm after the village is destroyed, I'm not going to worry about the wonders. I'm going to destroy the racks and then I'm going to attack the town center. The wonders Honestly, the only wonder that you might want to destroy is the Porcelain Tower. The Flying Crows are not that important, and the Summer Palace is also not that important. So the Confucian Academy you can ignore. Well, there you have it for part one of this series. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and comment below. Thanks.